Welcome back to Zach Collect Stuff. Uh, some of my favorite product is coming out. Tops Series 1. It always signals the beginning of a new collector year. And so 2023 Series 1 should not disappoint. And I was not disappointed when I walked into Walgreens today and there was a bunch of hanger boxes. So I picked these up. These are my favorite format of buying retail. And uh, I'll explain why as we start ripping them open. So let's get to it. At Walgreens, they're typically about 12 bucks, so you can get them right around regular retail price. But in the hanger boxes, you have the blue parallels, uh, exclusive blue parallels to retail. Um, no other exclusives, I don't think. Obviously, home run challenge stuff on the bottom. But uh, the reason that I love hanger boxes so much is that when you buy these, I feel like you get at least one color or like foil, um, gold, something like that per pack, per box. And so I feel like that's your best odds of hitting a decent um, color parallel of the, one of the big rookies. But this year, 2023, I feel like the print run is way up. So we're going to see if these are still bangers, right? If these hanger boxes are still producing at a high level. And so I know there's a couple of other guys that have already run the numbers and everything. Like Striker Breaks always run the, runs the numbers. But uh, I've always loved the hanger boxes and the format here. So let's tear into them and let's see if we can pull something fun. So. <clears throat> I'm only going to open two of them in this video and then I will uh, do more in a couple other videos. So. Um, the reason that I like hanger boxes, another reason, I feel like you get almost as many cards as you do in a blaster box. Um, almost as many cards as you do in a blaster box and it's about $10 cheaper. And the reason that you're paying so much less is because you don't get the guaranteed relic, the guaranteed, um, manufactured relic. And I'm totally fine with that because those guaranteed relics, unless you pull a color parallel or a big name, they're pretty much worthless anyways, right? Start from the back of the pack here. This year's design, I like it a lot. It's growing on me. So what I'm doing now, um, I'm pulling aside all the rookies and all of my players. So if there's a Miguel Cabrera, I'll pull that aside. Um, Chris Bryant, I've always kind of set aside for my son. There's a Bobby Witt Jr. Rookie Cup. So obviously you're still looking for a couple of the big names. If we were to pull a color parallel with the Rookie Cup there, it'd be a decent card. Uh, but as it is, that's probably a dollar card. Cal Rowley. There we go. There's one that I haven't pulled yet. I have not yet pulled a Riley Green. So put him on the stage back there. That's a good start for me. Mark Appel. This guy has been in baseball since 2014, I think. And this is his rookie card uh, some nine years later. He was drafted by the Astros, I think, really high in the draft was at number one overall and then he ended up falling out of baseball um maybe he retired or whatever and then he came back last year and the the astros traded him and he ended up on the phillies who now are giving him a chance in the big league big league club so i'm separating out rookies separating out the star cards and uh <clears throat> And the cool cards that I see. Landscape cards are always tough for me. It's tough to uh, hold them as you go through the packs. But. Jesus Sanchez, DeGrom. And obviously a lot of the guys now have seen every base card in here. I'm still looking for the big rookies. I know they're kind of... Um, the value on those is drying up. By the end of the season, you'll probably see a lot of the big name rookies at a dollar piece uh, from Series One because there is so much of it out there. So the ones that you want to hang on to are the ones that are serial numbered, color parallels, stuff like that, because there's only a certain number of them out there. It's an interesting image in that one. I don't know what the image variation numbers are but so the base card numbers are 65 guess we'll have to see if there's a difference 
All right. So in every retail pack, you're going to get a bunch of these stars of the MLB. I like the design this year. Good names, just not the right names. Hunter Green and an Acuna. So I did not get a color parallel this time um, or a foil or anything. So what it's telling me is maybe there's a lot more of these out there. Let's look at the numbers. You get a gold at 1 in 15, rainbow foil 1 in 2, royal blue 1 in 3, green foil 1 in 61, orange 1 in 102. So, <clears throat> yeah, there's probably a ton more of these out there. Um, the fact that you, I didn't, last year when I was opening up Update, it felt like you were getting at least a foil parallel and then sometimes a blue or a gold or sometimes both on top of it. So I guess we'll see throughout the course of the next couple of videos, like if we pull really anything. So let's get into box two here. <clears throat> I would love to see a low number uh, parallel, like an Independence Day or a vintage stock i'd like to see a gold of a rookie that'd be really nice again i'll pull off the back here max castillo patrick wisdom jj Blade. that could be a good rookie card um don't really know exactly where he sits anymore as far as like quality of prospect but he was pretty hot when he first came in here's a guy that i'm looking for vaughn grissom I feel like Vaughn Grissom has kind of taken a backseat to a lot of the big name guys, but I feel like his value is there for uh, for a huge increase. Now, I'm not sure if he'll be starting shortstop for the Braves, but uh, we're going to see as the season starts. Mateo. Evanly. Grove. There's a Trouty. Alec Baum, Willie Adamas, O'Neill Cruz, Pete Alonzo. There's an Adley. Nice. And I'll take that too. I am preparing for a show next weekend, so I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, getting everything situated, cards priced. I think I'm going to make a video about, uh, about kind of how I prepare for a show and kind of how long it takes me, what all goes into it. Um, but yeah. Let's just get through these. That's a cool image. I like that a lot. Michael Harris. That's another big name. This has been a really good box. They got the Vaughn Grissom, the Adley Rutschman, and the Michael Harris all in the same box. That's a really good box. I'll take that for sure. And more of those. Anytime you see an Orioles rookie, it's typically a good thing, except for this one. You want the Adley Rutschman, you want the Gunnar Henderson, um, but the Kyle Stowers doesn't seem to have the clout. Brian Bayo, Bello is a decent name. <clears throat> Oswald Peraza is another good one. Put him there. Maybe I can kind of double up on some of the stands. Corey Wheat. I feel like I've already seen that name. Freed, Rodon. Yep, this is kind of the same collation as part of the first pack. Steel Walker. Anderson, G-Man. Oh, I got a backwards card. Let's see if it's a foil. It is. Rainbow foil, Tyler O'Neill. Not a great one, but not a terrible name either. So pretty cool. Like the look of these year, this year's foil cards. Super nice looking. I think that design really helps the foil pop. So very cool. I like that. Let's see who we get for our stars of the MLB. I feel like a couple of the same ones. Garrett Cole, Bo Bichette. And anytime we see a Trouty, I'm totally fine with that. Rafi Devers. These are probably, I mean, these and my uh, my other favorite are the All Aces. Those looks like playing cards. They're pitchers. 
past and present. Uh, but these ones have a nice foil on them. Really cool looking card, except this one seems to have like a massive print line that goes right across through the middle of his helmet where his eyes are. I don't know if you can see that on the screen there, but yeah. So those are the first two boxes. Um, pretty happy with the second box for sure. Got all four of those rookies in the second box. Pulled the Riley Green out of the first one, so I'm super happy with that. Um, the Trout insert. The Tyler O'Neill Rainbow Parallel. The Tyler O'Neill Rainbow Parallel. And the Mike Trout 88 design insert. Super cool looking card. Um, pretty happy with that second box for sure. Um, and obviously we have stacks and stacks of base cards. Which uh, with this year, if you like building sets, there's going to be an abundance of it out there for you to build. Um, I feel like it'll be pretty easy and pretty affordable to get online and uh, on eBay and pick up just lots of the base cards or the pick and choose, whatever. Um, I really feel like the base cards are essentially worthless in this year's base set, except for the rookies. Obviously, you want to hang on to your rookies. <clears throat> the decent names, you want to set them aside, put them in protection, uh, penny sleeves at least, top loaders, whatever. Um, so like the Bladet, I'll probably put in a protector of some kind. Brian Bello, I'll probably put in a top loader. But for the most part, um, your standard base cards are going to be pretty worthless. It's not going to stop me from collecting. I collected during the junk era. I'm collecting now during the new junk era. But uh, I feel like these last two boxes were okay. And that's going to be a representation of typically what you see. Obviously, you're going to have hot streaks where you pull a couple hot hot boxes. And you're going to have dead streaks where you pull kind of like what we saw in that first box, which not much, not much to get excited about. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this kind of sheds a light on what to expect from 2023 retail in series one. But uh, I love it. I love the design. I love this year's rookie class. Again, thanks for watching. And I'm always going to have some new content on for you, whether it's openings, um, hopefully as garage sale season comes upon us, some good finds at garage sales and, and estate sales and whatever else. Uh, so I'm excited for that part of it too. So have a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon.